you shout something out, I want you to echo it back. Okay? Okay! okay. Well, welcome to like the Halloween Jacktail tonight. I like me. We're calling a Hee Haw Halloween. And the reason is that somebody uh, acquired these fancy Nancy costumes, these glittery costumes, from a show in Pigeon Forge. And uh, so I said, well, let's make it a hee haw kind of a, a night. So can I hear a hee haw? Hee haw! Okay. And so I thought we'd start out with a little bit of a dancing, too. But just to let you know, tonight is a uh, Tales and Tunes night. In other words, we're going to be doing some stories that have uh, uh, maybe some witches or some scary giants or something like that in it. And then we're going to have some tunes by Todd Wright over here, our special guest. He's a professional. He's a very good guy. He's got a brand new hammer dulcimer there. Let's give it a hand for Todd. But I thought we'd get started with a little bit of hee-haw dancing. So I'll tell you the moves. Believe me, I do not know how to call a square dance or a round dance. Uh, I just took some of the moves, and so we're going to try them out. Bow to your partner. Bow to your partner. Everybody hold hands on a circle. Hold hands. Hold hands. And circle to the right. Circle to the right. Circle to the right. Say hee haw. Circle to the left. Circle to the left. Circle to the left. Say hee haw. Move to the middle. Move to the middle. Move to the middle, say hee haw. Move on back, move on back, move on back and say hee haw. Circle to the right, circle to the right, circle to the right, say hee haw. Circle to the left, circle to the left, circle to the left and say hee haw. Here's the one with your partner. Do see no to the right, do see no to the right, do see no to the right, say hee haw. Does he go to the left? Does he go to the left? Does he go to the left? Say hee haw! Circle to the right! Circle to the right! Circle to the right! Say hee haw! And all of a sudden, they heard. The meanest you've ever seen is witch come into the ballroom and she said, Stop! You, you sound awful! You sound awful! All that hee haw, hee haw! All that hee haw, hee haw! You sound like donkeys! You sound like donkeys! And you dance like elephants! And you dance like elephants! You'll never get to Dollywood! You'll never get to Dollywood! Now, didn't you read the decree? I warned you, I warned you, no dancing, no dancing, no fun. Oh, no dancing, no fun. And if you do, you get punished. So first of all, sit down, shut up, get out of the way. No, go to your seats, go to your seats, go to your seats, get off the stage. I don't want to see your ugly faces. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go, go, go. Check out where you're supposed to sit. All right. Now, you know what this is, don't you? This is Halloween. This is not Halloween for you. Yeah, we're going to have some scary stories. And we're going to have some music. But, but no dancing, no, no fun. No fun. <laughs> and she laughed and she ran off and sat down somewhere. <laughs> well, so we're gonna have some stories. Well, let's see. We got some story sacks over here. We've got four story sacks. We've got this one, we've got that one, we've got a green one, we've got a rainbow sack. Let me see. Four, three, two, one. Welcome to the top. It's kind of spooky. Let me see. Well, now this green one. Oh, there's a, a green glass jar in this sack. So let's start out with that story. 
And it's a story <laughs> called Jack and the Guinea Jimmy. So, here's the story. Once upon a time ago, once upon a time ago, in the Smoky Mountains, there lived a feller named Jack. Named Jack. Well, now, uh, Jack was uh, a feller that was married to a woman named Mary. And this woman named Mary, he thought she was the prettiest woman in the world. She had pretty red hair and a beautiful smile. But as soon as they got married, things changed. She started getting contrary. You know what that is? If Jack was to say yes, she'd say no. If Jack said, let's go, she'd say, whoa. If Jack wanted this, she wanted that. She was very contrary. And not only that, but her whole face started changing, her whole body. She started getting a little bit uglier and uglier and uglier every day. And Jack thought, something's wrong here. I don't believe this is a natural born one. Well, one day he came home. And inside the cabin, he heard some noises. And it was his wife, Contrary Mary. And she was uh, casting some sort of a spell, saying these things. And... Uh, she uh, said, uh, and then all of a sudden she pulled out this corn shuck doll. And she took a long pin and she was going to stick it. And, and Jack looked at that doll and he had the same kind of hat that he had on. It had a walking stick like Jack carried. And uh, she took that pin and she stuck it in that doll's leg. And outside Jack said, oh, quick. And he had to stop his mouth because... Oh my gosh, he's, he felt the pain in his leg. So he realized, uh-oh, that woman, that wife, that contrary Mary, she is definitely not a regular woman. She is a witch. I gotta get away from her. I can't stand listening to her anymore. I gotta get off. I gotta leave. I gotta go right away. So the next morning, the rooster crowed. Everybody crowed. <laughs> The lights came up. The lights came up. Yeah. And Jack said to Contrary Mary, Contrary Mary, I'm leaving. I've got to get away from you. I can't stand here to be Contrary no more. I'm going to leave. And I'm going to leave you the cabin. You can have the whole cabin. Everything in the cabin. You can have the money. You can have everything. The only thing I'm going to take are the clothes on my back and my good old walking stick. And, uh, my hat. And I'm going to leave it with you. Goodbye, Mary. I hope I never see you no more. And I hope I never have to hear your mouth being so contrary. So Jack walked away. Where's my Jack? Where's my Jack? There he is. So Jack walked away and he walked away. Just walking around. So he was walking around and he was angry. He was kicking stones. He was just mad about everything. And then suddenly he hit something. And, uh, there's a little bit of a green jar sticking out the ground. So he took his jackknife and he dug it out. And then he found that he had this green jar. Here it is, Jack. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it had this, like, a green cloud inside that jar. He didn't know what that was. And then he heard something. Listen. Something was inside the jar knocking. Jack didn't know what was in it. Are you brave, Jack? You want to open it up? So he opened up that jar, and whoosh! Out from that jar came this green cloud. And it got thicker and thicker and thicker, and it grew arms, and it grew legs. Oh my gosh, coming out that jar. Oh my gosh. And uh, it turned out to be this great big old green giant. Let's see that green giant. Oh my gosh. And he said, Oh, Jack. He said, Jack, thank you so much. I've been in that jar for a thousand years. And it's sure is good to be out. And to thank you, Jack. To appreciate what you've done for me, I'm going to give you three wishes, Jack. You get three wishes. 
Yeah, so, uh, Jack, what do you think you'd like to wish for? But wait, let me, let me tell you something, Jack. He said, now, <clears throat> there's a condition to the wishing, Jack. Yeah, there's a condition, and the condition is this. Yeah, I know that you're separated from contrary Mary. Yeah, but there's some divorce settlement to be done. So that means, Jack, anything you wish for, she gets twice as much. Two times as much. Is that all right? Is that all right? Think that'll be all right? Jack said, yeah, that'll be all right. I said, I don't care. Just so long as I never have to hear contrary Mary again. Well, all right, Jack. So the big old giant there, he said, uh, by the way, Jack, uh, I know your name. Do you know what my name is? What? And uh, Jack said, uh, well, I don't know. Is it, is it, are you one of them genies? Ask if he's a genie. He said, no, I'm not no genie. I'm a Jimmy. My name is Jimmy Joe Bob Genie. That's who I am. Yeah, I'm a genie. Now I'm a Jimmy. Excuse me. So what's your first wish, Jack? Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you. Jack thought about it. Now he didn't have a home now, so he said, okay. I wish for a home and land and cows and right here by the little kitchen river. Is that what you want, a home by the kitchen river? So he said, that's what I want. And the old uh, Jimmy, he said, all right, Jack, close your eyes and uh, cross your fingers and let's make a wish. And we're going to count you off. We're going to say tick, tock, tick, tock. Everybody say it. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Tick tock, tick tock. Okay, Jack, your time is up. What is your wish? And do you have your wish? And Jack opened his eyes. And yes, he did. He had a beautiful cabin. Oh my gosh. Right there by the river. And cows in the field. Well, Jack, how about that? Pretty good, eh? So Jimmy said, All right, Jack, that was a good wish. Now, you got a second wish. What would you like for your second wish? Jack thought about it. He patted his pants. He didn't have any money. So he said, all right, I want a bag of gold. A bag of gold. He said, that's a good wish. But now remember, Jack, old contrary Mary, she'll get twice as much gold. And she's got a house like yours, too. That's all right. He said, yeah, that'd be all right. So long as I don't have to hear contrary Mary again. Yeah. So, he said, close your eyes, Jack. Wish real hard. And we're going to count you off. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Tick, tock. Jack opened his eyes. And he had a sack of gold. Oh, my goodness. You're lucky, Jack, ain't you? <laughs> And then the Jimmy said, all right, Jack, you got one more wish. You need to make it a good one. Think about it. Think real hard about what you want that wish to be. We're going to count you all first, and then you tell us what you want, okay? So close your eyes. Let's count them all. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Jack, hey, wait. I don't need no more tick tocks. I know exactly what I want. I want you to take this your club, and I want you to take this club, and I want you to beat me. I want you to beat me black and blue. I want you to beat me so hard. I want you to beat me half to death. <laughs> so Jack never did have to hear contrary Mary again. That's the story of Jack and the Jimmy Jimmy.
Bob Riley is a kind of a pine tree that grows around in these mountains. Bob Riley pine. <laughs> This is Jilly. Oh, that's his good wife. Let's give her a hand. Well, they uh, had got pretty old by the time of this story. They would got to be uh, up in their 60s, 70s, up in their 80s. And uh, things were not too good. Uh, instead of getting richer, they seemed to get poorer. And so they were not feeling very good about their lives. So they were sitting around one day on the porch and just complaining about everything. That was, it's just terrible, ain't it? I never had such bad luck in my life. That terrible flood we had, oh, it was just terrible, like wiped us out. Oh, I know, I wish we had some good dry clothes, don't you? Yeah, I wish we had some food. My belly's growling all the time. Don't have hardly nothing to eat at all. 
It's all, and this whole cabin, oh, I declare it's just getting holes in the logs and things. It's terrible. I wish we had a new cabin. I wish we had money. I wish we had uh, uh, something. To, I wish we had some children to take care of us. I wish we had something good. You know, we ain't got nothing, but I, there is one thing I would wish for. I wish that we could at least have something to to laugh about, and if not to laugh about, at least uh, maybe something to smile about, or if nothing to smile about, at least something to just crack a grin now and then. But we ain't got nothing. <laughs> We're just so pitiful. I wish, oh, I wish, 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 I wish the fairies would come on. <laughs> And they twirled around, and they danced around, and they danced around, and twirled those pretty dresses. Oh yeah, kick them! Oh how pretty they are! Oh look at them! Am I seeing things or something? I'm clear. Look at them things there. Oh, where are you? There you, oh, there you are. Stop right there. Could we talk? Could we talk to you a little bit? Be all right. Well, who are you, by the way, with these pretty dresses on? Oh, you're the Wish Fairies. Oh, can you believe it? We got some Wish Fairies here. Oh, my goodness. What pretty little Wish Fairies, too. Well, what are you doing here? Are you going to give her something? You are. What are you, are you going to give her something? What's you going to give her? A wish. She's going to give you a wish. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Going to give you a wish? Oh, what are you doing here? You going to give somebody something too? You are. What are you going to give? You, you're going to give me a wish. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm going to get a wish too. I'm so happy. Oh, oh, let's dance a little bit. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm going to get a wish. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, all of a sudden, the lights flickered off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. And out came a third wish fairy. Oh, my gosh. Well, uh, your, your magic wand looks a little bit different than these. So, I, are you a wish fairy, too? You are. Are you a good wish fairy? Yeah. It can go either way, eh? <laughs> oh dear. Well, uh, you ain't gonna wish no bad luck on us, are you? No. Oh, you're not. Well, that's good. Uh, uh, but you are gonna give us a wish, maybe? I'm gonna give both y'all a wish. You are! So you're not mad because they didn't invite you to the wish party? No. Oh, you're not mad? No. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad he's not mad. I'm glad. But he said so, so you're gonna do something special for him. What you gonna do? But you have to decide together. You're going to give both of us one a wish together, and we have to make up our minds and decide on the wish together. Well, that may not quite be so easy. She ain't contrary Mary, but sometimes she is. And, uh, but we can do it. We can work it out, can't we? Sure, we can work it out. Well, very couple, let's see a little bit more dancing and prancing. Oh, yes, you look so good and twirl around. Oh, my goodness. Don't let your dress fall off. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Wish Fairies. And let's give the Wish Fairies a big hand. Okay. We're right over there now. Oh, my goodness. We have got three wishes. Ain't that wonderful? That was so cute. You know what? We can have what we want now. What? We could be president. We could be king and queen. We could have a great big old beautiful house and food. Oh yes! Don't remind me. We ain't had nothing to eat in days. My bellies are growling. Uh, and we can have so much stuff now. But we gotta be careful. We've got to wish very careful and don't waste these good wishes. Nothing like this happens very often. So, so we're going to wish good. So we need to think about it. We need to think about it. Yeah, well, you got one by yourself, but still you don't want to waste it, do you? No. Okay, good. Well, as I said, my belly's growling. 
And uh, I think I better get to the store in White Oak Flats and see if we can't get some, a little bit of cornmeal, at least have a corn bun. While we think, uh, our brains will have some, some juice to go on them. We can think a little bit better. Yes, sir. So you stay here and you just take care. Think, but don't think about what you want. Now to think about this. Oh, boy. So Jack, he headed to White Oak Flats. That's what uh, Gatlinburg used to be called White Oak Flats, and there was a store, it was an old store, and he got some cornmeal. And on his way back, he smelled something. Oh, did you fart? <laughs> he smelled something good. No, it was really good. He, his neighbor must have butchered a hog. Mm, and there's a nice big sausage. All cooked oh, and laid out on the windowsill. Oh, that sausage looks so good. <coughs> oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, I'd love to. Mm, boy, it would be good to have that. Oh, I can't wait to tell Jilly, 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 Jilly. Oh, I just had one of the best things to happen to my nose in a long time. I smell freshly made, freshly cooked sausage. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it wasn't mine. It was his farmer Brown's next door to us. He had butchered, I reckon. And he had a beautiful sausage, but it made me think, oh, Lord, that's just, that's just a little bit of taste of what we can have if we use our wishes, right? So, oh, my gosh, I tell you, mm, it smells so good. I just can't believe it. Oh, oh, I can almost smell it now. Can't you just smell it? Can't you just imagine what it would have? You wish you had one of those sausages, what do you mean? Oh no! Oh no! What is that? Oh, it's a sausage! A sausage! Oh, no. Jilly! Why is there sausage? You silly woman! <laughs> you done wished! You done wasted your wish! I can't believe it! Wishing for a sausage when we could have had a whole bake, when we could have had food for our lives, got a whole hog, and then you done wasted on that! Stupid little you woman! I didn't really, you, you you wasted. I just so, I am so unhappy about you. I am so mad with you. I am so mad. I wish that sausage was on her nose. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh, oh no! 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 Oh no! Oh my God! Oh my Lord! I'll try to pull it off. I'll pull it off. Here. Yeah, what is this? Yeah. I'm gonna pull it off. Here, I'll swing you around, see if I can hold it off. He's swinging around. around. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get it off. I got to get it. Oh, oh no, that ain't working. That ain't working. I know, I know, I know. Just throw it over your shoulder. Nobody will ever notice. Nobody will ever notice. No. Oh, what are we gonna do about that? I got an idea. I stand over here, stand right over here, stand right over there, stand right over there. And just put that nose, put that snoz right down there. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Uh, uh, I was just going to uh, chop it off a little bit. Of, oh, no. Don't you hit me. Oh, get me. Quick, quick, quick. Get me. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, uh, okay. All right. I get the idea you are unhappy. I'm very happy. Get this off my nose. Couldn't you just close your eyes? Stuck it down your bosom or something. <laughs> oh, so we got to use waste our third wish. You got to use it up. Do we agree? Okay. All right, on three then. I wish this sausage was off your nose. Oh. Thank you. It's a weight off your nose, isn't it? <laughs> well, but guess what? We ain't got no more wishes. We wasted three perfectly good wishes, and now we ain't got nothing but. We got a sausage. We got a sausage. And we got corn pone. Yeah. We can cook some corn pone and eat that sausage. Uh, you did blow your nose good before you took it off, right? Okay. Well, uh, well, we've got a little something then. But still, we could have had so much more. We could have had so much more, something bigger, something more wonderful, Jilly. Oh my gosh, I, I think I'm going to be depressed again anyway. I'm just so unhappy. <laughs>
and uh, she was not doing too well, and they didn't have any money. They were poor, sort of like Jack and Jill. So he decided to leave home and try to make some money. So he started walking down the road and walking down the road and walking down the road. And he kept a walk and he couldn't find a job, he couldn't find any money. And he came to a sign that said, Bass Ackwards Road. So he had to start walking Bass Ackwards. So he walked down the road, Bass Ackwards, Bass Ackwards, down the road, down the road. Then he started walking the regular way. Well, it started to rain. Oh my gosh, it was a terrible rain and Jack was getting soaking wet. And he didn't know what to do, but he saw a light in the cabin. So he went to that cabin and he sat down in a chair. And on the table there was some food. So he ate some of the food on the table. Yeah. And then he was tired, so he laid down in the bed to go to sleep. Pretty soon he was snoring. Everybody snore. Well, it got to be very late and very dark. No, I can't remember what I said. Yeah! And the witch came home. And the witch came home. She went inside the cabin. She looked in the chair and she said, Somebody's been sitting in my chair. She looked on the table. Somebody's been eating my food. She looked on the bed. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And she was mad about it. She woke him up. Wow. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up there. Get up there. You scamp. What's her name? What's her name? She said, I am with Jack. Who are you? I am Jack. Jack. She said, Well, Jack, you are going to die. I don't want nobody in my cabin. I don't want nobody to know where I live. So you are going to die. How do you want to die? Like How do you want to get? By a knife? By, by a gun? How, Jack? How? Jack said, I don't want to die. I don't want to Please die. don't kill me. Don't kill I'll me. do anything you say. <laughs> she said, no, you're going to die. No, I'm going to get you. And Jack said, but wait a minute now, oh, ma'am. Listen, I got a sweet old mama back home oh. in the Smoky Mountains. I got a sweet old mama. Mother, yeah, so and she ain't doing good, and she needs uh, some help. She's sick, and I need to get money and all to make her uh, well again. Uh, so please don't kill me, because I'm my mama's only hope. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. My mother don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, the witch uh, didn't exactly feel sorry for him, but she had an idea. He said, all right, Jack. All right, Jack. So you're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. You got a good heart. You're good to your mama. I think I can help you out. Well, I'll tell you what. Follow me, Jack. So she led him over to the foot of a mountain. I made it tomorrow. And uh, she said, now, Jack, climb up this mountain. Real. Go all the way to the top there. Well, Jack got to the top of the mountain. He said, what now? What now? She said, now go down in the hole. But wait a minute, let me tell you everything. Go down in the hole and you'll find a sack of gold down there. Go down in the hole, Jack. See you see it. So Jack went down in the hole and he looked under one of the benches, Wait, the and there was a sack of gold. You see? There it is. Oh, yeah. So he came back to the top. He said, I found it. Found it. He said, all right, Jack. I throw it down to me. He said, no. No. He said, no, I'll bring it down. He said, oh, please throw it down. I've been, I've been waiting for this gold a long time. It takes somebody with a good heart to get that gold. Is that a flying fish? You got the gold, I'll give it to me. Is that a flying fish in the back? said, oh, Jack, that's magic gold. Whatever you spend, it comes back in the sack. Throw it down, Jack. Throw it down. Stand on the top. Stand on the top and throw it down. 
And Jack said, uh, No, I'll bring it down. Oh. And she's like, All right, that I'm mad. All right, that I'm mad. <laughs> Throw it down. Throw it down. Uh, and Jack was suspicious that something funny was going on. So instead of throwing the sack down to the witch, there was a hornet's nest. And he threw it over there, disturbed the hornets, and they started running after the witch and chasing her, make noise out there, round them up, round them up. And they stung her, and they stung her, and they stung the witch to death. Yeah. So let's give the bees a big hand. Yay! Yay! So Jack, he got to go home with a sack full of gold, and Jack and his mama never would have to worry about money again. And that's a jerk called Jack and the Witch's Gold. Yeah. to 1954. He was a famous guy and he was called a Roman man of the mountains and he told stories and if it wasn't a true story he'd yodel after it which meant that you can believe it or not. So I'm gonna tell, I won't tell you what I would have told you, he moved to town into a haunted house and uh, his kids, uh, there was a coffin factory across the road from where they lived and the kids put those coffins in the river and floated them down the river like a boat and then they put them on the shore and it rained and stormed and the coffin washed down the river towards Pigeon Forge and the people thought, oh my goodness, why don't Platt Cemetery has flooded and this is the coffins? I won't tell you that part, but I will <laughs> tell you the story real quick. Like, uh, not many scary things happened to Wiley, but this one time when he was a young fellow, it, it, it was pretty scary for Wiley. Um, he was a young boy. And he had uh, like six brothers and sisters who were older than him, and they didn't play with him. So he was lonesome. He, so he asked his daddy one day, his mama had died when he was eight years old. He said, can I please go visit my buddy over the mountain? So his daddy said, all right, uh, Wiley, you are good in these mountains. You know your way around, so I'll trust you, but you've got to be home by dark. And do not go to a stranger's cabin, because there are some strange, bad people in these mountains. So you'd be very careful. So he promised he would. So Wiley, he, he walked up the mountain, he walked down the mountain until he got to his buddy's house. And they had a good time. They played marbles. They uh, uh, went a little bit of fishing. And they just had so much fun that Wiley wasn't paying attention that it was getting pretty late. Well, he could see that the sun was about to go down. So he said, I gotta go. So he said goodbye to his friend, and he started up the mountain. Now the sun was setting on that side, so that means when he crossed the mountain, it started getting darker and darker and darker. Well, it got pretty dark over there. Well, it was getting cold, you know, I can be in the Smoky Mountain sometime. But uh, while he kept walking, he kept hearing these wild animals. 
and you get to hear these oh, you get to hear wolves out in the woods oh so he was getting a little bit scared so he finally saw a light of a cabin in the woods and he thought well let me go see if i know them so he went over he saw he did not recognize the cabin and he remembered what his daddy said what did daddy say don't, don't go to a stranger's cabin but he didn't feel like he had any choice because it was getting cold and the animals were out there and, and he was just he thought he had to do something so he went up and he knocked on the door pop 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 so inside he could hear some funny noises somebody sort of fussing and he could feel the floor shake like something heavy was jumping up and down on the floor. <laughs> and that scared Wiley a bit, so he said, I better leave here. So he started to walk away, but the door opened up. And there was this great big old tall woman. She said, what do you want, boy? She said, uh, well, I'm lost, ma'am, and I, I, I'm needing some place to, to spend the night that's safe. She said, what is your name? He said, my name is Wiley. Wiley Oakley. Said, oh, I know your daddy. Your daddy, Leonard Oakley? Yeah, well, I know him, so I trust you. So, yeah, we was just about to have supper. Come on in, Wiley, come on in. So Wiley felt better now. He went inside. They were a poor family. Many of the families in the Smoky Mountains were very poor. They didn't have much at all. It was just a one room cabin. They did have a little lean to, and there was a, a kind of a door that was blockaded there. It had a had a, a lock on it. Not a lock, but just a, a bar to keep it from opening and closing. And when he went in there, Jack and Wiley could see that uh, there wasn't but one person. She had said, we were getting ready to eat. So she was, he was concerned about that. He said, come on, sit down, Wiley. We ain't got much, just some water and some corn pone. But Wiley was glad to have it because he was hungry. So he ate that up and uh, he heard some noise come from that little lean-to. And he could feel the floor shaking a little bit. And he didn't like that at all. And she noticed that he was noticing that. She said, oh, Wiley, don't worry about it. That's my son, Kane. Uh, he gets all excited when we have fun. So don't don't pay him no never mind. Just go ahead and eat, and then you can go upstairs to the loft and you can sleep. So after he finished eating, uh, inside the cabin there was this ladder. So he climbed up the ladder, there was a little trap door, he went upstairs and went off. And so he fell to sleep pretty fast because he was pretty tired. Well, about midnight, I guess it was, there was a full moon coming up, so there was light in that room up there and he could see. And he decided that he didn't want to stay there one minute longer. There was something wrong about that cabin. So he decided to sneak out. So he opened up that trap door and it creeped. But he hoped nobody heard it. And he finished opening it up and he took off his boots and he tied them around his neck so that his shoes wouldn't make noise. And he slowly went down that ladder, down that ladder, down that ladder. And uh, then he started walking, and of course the floor creaked. There's an old punching floor. Punching floor, in case you don't know, is like a, a tree that's cut in half, and then the flat top is the floor. It's an old, when they didn't have mills back then. So it was an old floor, and every walk, every step he walked, creak. And he sure didn't like that, but he kept walking towards the door. Then he heard something breathing in that room. He didn't know what it was. It wasn't a dog or a cat. But there was something breathing behind him. Well, he walked a little bit faster towards the door and he put his hand on the door latch. And they didn't have door knobs back then, just a wooden latch kind of thing. And he was about to open it and this great big old hand grabbed him on the shoulder and pulled him around. And while his soul was Great big old giant of a fella. I mean, he had a great big old face, very fleshy, very mean looking, had a great big old mouth, and his teeth was hanging out there. And uh, this fella said to, to Wiley, You want to know 
what I do with my great big old fleshy fingers and my big blubbery lips. And Wally said, no, I don't, I don't want to know what you do with your, your, your big fleshy fingers and your, and your big blubbery lips. And that fella said, well, I'm going to tell you what I can do with my great big old fleshy fingers and my great big old blubbery lips. <laughs> I Me need a oh. <laughs> That's a tall tale, do you can believe it or not? And it's even a double tall tale because that's not a Wiley story. That's a story from Cuz Hedrick, who is one of the people who get started uh, this, these act tales with me back in 1987. Four, three, two, one. Welcome to the We'll turn on the mic so people can get out. Thank you for coming. Take a bow.